Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the AFT Show, episode number four. Today's episode is brought to us and presented by Royal Enfield. I'm Scotty Dibbler, the voice of American Flat Track and co-host of the Off the Groove podcast. This week, we got a great show. We actually have three guests, and uh, the first uh, the first one, you guys know for MEC Sports, let's bring in Kristen Beat. Kristen, how are you doing? I am doing very well. How are you, Scotty? I am good. I'm bored. I'm ready to be at a racetrack. That's, mm-hmm. I mean, that's that's it in a nutshell. I'm just, I'm ready to go outside. I'm ready to go to the racetrack. I'm ready to have some fun. I need something to cheer for again. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. The mm-hmm. iRacing is okay, but it's not cutting. It's not motorcycles. It's not flat track. So mm-hmm. I heard you're on because you got some special questions a little bit later on. Yeah. So every week on the American Flat Track Facebook page, you guys, the fans, you can actually submit questions. Use the comment section underneath our posts and uh, ask the guests that are coming on any questions that you may have. So when we announce the new guest, comment underneath the uh, Facebook post and you guys can ask the guests any question. Sounds good. Well, Kristen, I'll chat with you here in a little bit. Okay. Sounds good. See you soon. All right, let's bring in our first two guests, the guests we have brought on from Royal Enfield. Please welcome Bree Poland and Johnny Lewis. What's been going on, guys? Uh, you know, it's just uh, <laughs> trying to get through this time. Johnny, you're sitting outside? I mean, is it that nice in Florida? You just got to hang out? Uh, uh, yeah, it is. It's, it's nice, but uh, I also live in the middle of nowhere, so my internet's pretty bad. So to be able to get some time with you, Scotty, I had to had to venture out into the real world and uh you know take my chances and and uh sit here and enjoy the nice weather well i appreciate that uh brie you're up in wisconsin you've got a beanie on your head it's 84 in oklahoma i'm sweating right now and you've got a beanie on your head i'm so jealous of you guys like we've had one nice day in the last two months i i snuck out on road but it's usually hanging around like 45 to 50 degrees and when it's 50 it's super windy so it feels like it's 30. (laughs) Wow. So yeah. what, have you, what have you been doing during the quarantine? Are you staying inside? Are you working or what, what have you been doing? Actually working harder than we ever have. Uh, we've been uh, at a work from home order for Royal Enfield for about six and a half weeks now. So we started even before the state started mandating a stay at home. Uh, the company kind of just looked at the whole idea and tried to get ahead of things and keep all of us safe and healthy. We've been working from home. Obviously, a lot of what we do is event-based, so we've had to focus more on a digital um, aspect of that. So it's been interesting focusing all the efforts um, from you know social media to websites to working with media and publications, bugging Johnny constantly, you know, <laughs> things of like course. that. Of yeah. course. So Johnny, uh, I, I follow you on social media. It seems like you never stop. I know you've got the Moto Anatomy camp, and there's always something to do. You're working on stuff. You got a bike, you know, bike projects, track projects. What else have you been doing during the quarantine time? Uh, yeah, I never ends for me. I got 16 acres, so I got to keep up with that. And then uh, I actually started an online school program. Um, one of the things I just I just wanted to get going, and now I kind of got some extra time. And I just, it's neat because I got people over the world wanting to learn flat track. And now it's, uh, aside from me going and doing some stuff with Royal Enfield and going across the world, now I can actually reach people and train people, um, you know, with my online program. So that's pretty neat as well. So, Bree, let's talk about how you, how you and Royal Enfield teamed up with Johnny Lewis. How did that, that, you know, come together? I have to give a lot of credit to SNS when we were bouncing around names and people and a name that just, kept coming up on the top of the list from everyone that we spoke to is Johnny Lewis, Johnny Lewis. Even other riders were like, hey, if you guys do a flat track program, Johnny Lewis. So I think he was just like forced upon us through all every aspect possible. And we couldn't say no, it had to be Johnny Lewis. <laughs> right, just the right. good energy, good energy. It is, it's floating all over the place. All right, so why, 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 um, I guess my question is, why did Royal Enfield decide to get involved in flat track? I don't, either one of you can answer that one. I'm not sure the answer. So I, we have a, I have a partner that I work directly with over in the UK. He's an American, but he works for our tech center. Uh, his name is Adrian Sellers. He's the one who was able to make all this happen at the end of the day. He's the one who has the budgets and the ideas, and he's the one who developed the bike with Harris Performance and SNS. But we've been getting it from every side. When is Royal Enfield going to join Flat Track? You know, and we before we launched the Twins, we did, really didn't have a bike that was capable um, for it. And then, you know, once we launched it, it's been a conversation for about a year, year and a half now uh, internally. 
and how do we do it? How do we develop this motorcycle to be able to be somewhat competitive or competitive um, in the flat track space? And, you know, so we decided to go for it. Obviously, this season, whenever it kicks off, is definitely going to be a development year. Um, Johnny has, you know, such a great background when it comes to developing motorcycles and just the experience that he has. So, you know, do we want to run races? Absolutely. But we also want to take, you know, everything that we learned this year and develop an even better program moving forward. And I think, you know, Johnny's expertise, Harris, SNS, Adrian, everything combined is, you know, this again, this year is going to be development, but I think, you know, in the years coming, we're just, it, it's just going to be great. And I just can't wait. We're just so excited and it's just not happening. Yeah, I can't wait to get back to the track, too. So you kind of touched on this a little bit, but what is Royal Enfield looking to gain in this first season when we get started? To, to develop this motorcycle. You know, we have, we've had zero track time. Johnny mentioned on our group call last week, he's like, hey, guys, can I actually ride the bike? You know, the motorcycle, can I get out there and spend some laps? Um, so it's really just learning about the motorcycle's capability as a flat, you know, as a real flat track racer. Um, gain some valuable knowledge on that, use Johnny's insight and how to tweak things to make things better. Um, I know that he's working really close with SNS. Uh, he might be up this way soon to, you know, work in the cold with us. I don't know. Um, <laughs> but it's really just seeing if we could be competitive, see if we could get on the podium, you know, in the future. Um, Johnny might get on the podium this year once racing started. Who knows? I mean, Whatever, but it's really just to learn about the capabilities of the motorcycle as a, a, as a flat track bike and see if it's worth us putting more effort into in the future. What does being a developmental year mean to Moto Anatomy and Royal Enfield, Johnny? You can you can speak on that, I guess. Uh, you know, for me, it, it's you know, it, it is another brand. I have ridden a lot of brands, and it's but it's exciting because it's a company that is like. You know they haven't really raced much so they're ex they're just excited as me it's not just another project it's like everybody's on board and everybody's excited so um you know for me to be part of this it kind of takes a lot of my knowledge that i have developed over the years and passed on to people and and uh you know other bikes and other projects um you know so for me it's you know i just i love riding motorcycles so like i said if i i asked me because we, we basically have the concept bike right now it's it's uh you know i don't have the real bike um, just because a lot of stuff stuck in uh, another country. <laughs> so, two um, other countries. <laughs> yeah, two other countries. So, um, you know, the concept bike was supposed to be on display at all the, you know, first couple of AFT races. We were supposed to do some some more stuff at these events, just kind of showing off the brand and, and everything. And uh, and I was like, Adrian, can I, can I actually ride this thing? Because I rode it a little bit, but I didn't want to, you know, it's his baby. It's his project he's been working on for a long time. So... Uh, he's like, yeah, you can ride my baby and, you know, go out and, and ride it on my track because I do have a track in my house. So at least it's a short track that I can feel out a few things. And actually just going through some footage last night, I'm like, hey, we should look into this, this and this. And it just kind of got some ideas last night. And, uh, you know, I think it's going to be a lot of that. It's going to be a lot of, you know, using the information I've got from other teams and stuff over the years and jumping on other brands and, uh, you know, kind of taking the success of the the Indian that I rode for the first time and the feelings that I had from that and applying to this thing. And, you know, the, the motor is a lot like the, uh, the triumph it's a, you know, parallel air cooled motor. So it's, it's in comparison to that. So I have a good amount of information from that that I was able to, you know, kind of pass on right away and then just kind of go from there. So I think between the chassis side of things, working with Harris and then obviously Roy Enfield developing the motor, um, you know, it, I'm excited about the team that, that I have, um, you know, because it's just, it's, it's kind of, um, you know, some fresh, you know, fresh blood into this whole flat track scene and they have information, you know, ideas that I'm like, man, I never even thought about that, you know, cause they're wow. coming, you know, Harris coming from a road race side and, um, in, and not just any road race. I mean, you know, the quality of stuff that they build is, is World amazing. World Superbike, MotoGP, yeah. like it's amazing. So, you know, when I asked about certain things they are like, Oh yeah, we can do that. I'm like, Oh, okay. I didn't think you could do that with a certain type of metal or, you know, certain things. So it's been, uh, it's already been really, really exciting to be part of that, the company for that reason. And so they think the, the development side of things, you know, I love riding motorcycles and I like going fast. I think I wrote that on the email today. You did. Three. <laughs> just messing with them. Cause it's like, I, I just want to go fast or I just, you know, like going fast. And, um, Obviously, I like pushing the boundaries of motorcycles and 
you know, finding their limits. Um, so I think uh, development year for me is, uh, you know, just we get a good, good amount of races in, kind of see where we're at. But, you know, I always have ambitions to, to – I don't just go out to go ride around a motorcycle. Every time I jump on a motorcycle, I try to, you know, maybe light some fighters and, you know, get a couple people route up a little bit and uh, just kind of my nature. But I, it's um, – because I think I can do it still. I'm, you know, I'm in my prime, I feel. I'm 30 and in good shape. And, and now we just got a good team, you know, underneath me and we can develop this thing and I think we can do good. Right on. So, Johnny, we, we've seen you over in India at Royal Enfield Slide School, Flat Track School, uh, when they launched this thing. Can we expect more of that here in the United States? Yeah. No, it's, uh, you know, going to India was one thing. You know, I launched the concept of it. We launched it at the, the Rider Mania, which is in Goa, India, uh, which was my first trip to India. I really didn't know much about the country. And then it's, uh, I think I've seen Bree comment on stuff, too. It's a place that I would, you know, make a second home. It's a, it's a beautiful place, and then the, the atmosphere, everybody's riding motorcycles. So uh, we launched it over there, and that was, uh, that was exciting because I, I was doing wheelies and doing donuts, and I had the crowd, and then I had the president of the company, like, pretty excited about what flat track looks like. Uh, and then Adrian, you know, kind of had a lot of weight lifted off his shoulder, it seemed like, so uh, with this project. And then uh, so we launched it, and we had, they had amazing, you know, uh, response. Yeah. Yeah, it was amazing. So I went back to India uh, the first week of March, <clears throat> right before um, all this happened. And uh, we launched the first slide school India at um, Big Rock. It's uh, an awesome facility, you know, on the, the east side of India and uh, kind of central. But, uh, you know, the 15 journalists, they loved it. You know, it was kind of a whole new thing. So it kind of was an idea, you know the Royal Enfield put together is, you know, kind of just getting people into the sport, you know, the, just for the fun of it, you know, realizing it doesn't take a, you know, $10,000 motorcycle to get into the sport. Um, it's pretty simple the way the changes that they made to these bikes. Uh, and now they're calling it the FT411, which is pretty neat. And, um, you know, it's a concept that's going to be pretty, you know, entry level uh, to get really anybody on a bike, whether, you know, we were to me and Brie were talking, it's like, they don't even have to ride, you know, just learn the basic of riding motorcycle because the bike is an easy, easy motorcycle to ride, but then it works really well for, for flat track training. So um, that's kind of leading me into a direction with Moto Anatomy. Everybody, a lot of people think Moto Anatomy is just like a race only school, but I do. I, I work with everybody. And, uh, you know, even this year, I've, you know, for AFT, I did a media day and I, I literally taught a 65 year old guy in the Forbes magazine really how to ride a you motorcycle know, $10, that day in three hours and ride around the track um, and have a blast. So, you know, it's kind of the whole concept for me is it's kind of uh, igniting something new for me as far as, uh, you know, uh, reaching new people uh, on a bike. And, uh, you know, a lot of people, you know, don't know the Royal Enfield brand. And I think it's going to allow us to really uh, promote the brand in the United States really well. And, and they're like, oh, yeah, I learned how to flat track on one of those things. I think that's going to be a story for years to come. So, um I'm uh, I'm excited to to get it going. I'm I'm kind of biting at it. I'm gonna go make make a trip to go pick them up, and then uh, hopefully as soon as we can, we'll, we'll announce some dates and get it going. Because there's a lot of people interested already, just from what I posted on on social media and stuff. So I'm excited. Yeah, we're getting emails daily on it, Johnny. So you, let's get let let's just get it going. <laughs> you you pretty much covered my next question, Johnny. But you know, do the people over there even, did they know what flat track was before this whole project got going? Uh, from, from YouTube and uh, Instagram. I mean, uh, they're asking me questions that I just, I'd never even, I haven't thought of in a long time. You know, it was like, you know, kindergarten stuff, stuff I tell Max and uh, just because it was, it's so fresh to them. And, um, you know, it, that was also the exciting thing that there's a, there's a country now, um, you know, I've kind of helped kind of start pioneering along with, Royal Enfield, the, the concept of flat track. And, uh, you know, I think they're kind of learning it, it the correct, you know, in a correct way that could help, you know, kind of pro, you know, get things going quicker for them. And we actually have some talented riders come out of a, out of uh, countries that, you know, have never had flat track riding before. Yeah. yeah this footage, you know, that, that, that we've seen and that they've seen over there is never before seen over there. So it's something new to a country. Do you think there might be races over there someday? I mean, it's, it's all brand new. 
Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's something that actually Royal Enfield's trying to work on is uh, through the slide school, kind of educate riders. Uh, in India, it's not just on Royal Enfield motorcycles. They kind of are launching the school, but they're allowing people to come on other motorcycles and just kind of build their speed up. And then uh, they want to do it, you know, have a little race series, which is, uh, is pretty neat, you know, to see. So it's um, not just you know, in other countries. Yeah, in Brazil, sorry to cut you off, Johnny, but uh, we have uh, some partners in Brazil that own a, one of our Royal Enfield dealerships, and Brazil is pretty new to flat track racing as well, and we're uh, getting them kits for about 30 um, Himalayan outfit uh, F to make into four, FT411, so I was just asking Johnny the other day, I'm like, so when this all ends, are you ready to come down to Brazil with me and teach the guys how the slide school and the program works, but the people in Brazil are just chomping at the bit to get into flat track. Um, I know one of Johnny's students is actually, his virtual students is from Brazil. So, you know, it's not just gonna be a Euro, European and US based sport anymore. I think people all around the world are just getting really excited about it. And the Himalayan is a really good motorcycle to learn, you know, the basics on. So it's the Himalayan FT411. Uh Let's talk, both of you, talk about the, the Harris Performance built chassis. He's never done a flat track chassis before. Uh, they've had research and development, 40 years of expertise along the way. So development for a year or so, a lot of adjustability to the chassis. So uh, what do you like most about what they've got so far, Johnny? Um, like, you know, like I said earlier, just kind of the, you know, kind of throwing some new things at me that, you know, I think a lot of people are like, no, nah, that won't work. And I think it's... Uh, you know, it's kind of exciting to hear like they could reach the reach what I want, just going a different direction in ways, um, you know, without getting too deep into it. Um, right. You know, but what what I really like is the motor and the chassis is the motor's really low. Um, you know, the center gravity of the motorcycle feels really good, um, you know, just riding around and, and doing whatever I, you know, if I was figure eights when the first time I rode it, just, you know, a parking lot. I actually rode in an Air Force base, you know, the old one in uh, in England first. And, uh, you know, just the whole balance of the motorcycle felt good just from the get-go. And, um, you know, and also just the – when I tell them I need something, um, you know, they're able to throw, you know, things at me, um, ways of getting it. And they're not uh, – no, not restricted to, hey, it has to be this way. They're, they're open. Um so it's it's neat working with such a big um, you know prestigious company in different different sport now over here. Um, so it's it's neat. I, I think it's going to be good. Bree, have you got a chance to ride one of these bikes too? Did you go over there to the to the to the, the debut of this? The the FT four elevens. Yeah. Oh, I've definitely mm -hmm. thrown my leg yeah. over them quite a few times. So S and S developed the first kits for them. So we were part of the initial pro the project. So uh, we had invited a bunch of local flat track racers from uh, Milwaukee area and Minnesota to have them come up and kind of do some of the footage for the launch of the slide school in Rider Mania um, in last November. So I've had a lot of time on it. I'm We're obsessed. Uh, my entire team, all they talk about is the FT411s, that they would ride them if they're street legal. They can't wait for Johnny to do a Royal Enfield day for you know the staff to get out there. We've got access to the Speed Ranch up in Viola from SNS, and uh, they have they have five of the FT411s that they originally built, so we have access to those whenever we'd like. And then they're building um, a bunch for Johnny to be able to take away and use for the slide schools. I I love flat track. I've tried it a couple times. I'm never going to be a pro racer like Johnny, but having the FT411 available is yeah. I like the I like how there's a partnership again with SNS. Uh, you know it, they've continued to help you guys out. You set the you know Royal Enfield to the Bonneville uh, record books, and and you're collaborating with them again for the FT411. So um, it's it's really neat to have their back. You know them having your back, I guess, and backing each other. Going, I, I like the I like the partnership you guys have. It's fantastic partnership. I don't think uh, you know. We never knew it would grow to the size it is as far as, it, you know, we throw a project at them. They're like, yep, absolutely. Get us a bike. Let's develop this. Um, and I know we'll talk about it later, but they outfitted all four of the girls for the Build Train Race program that I launched um, some months back with, with you know, some SNS bits and pieces. And they did the Bonneville bike. We broke records with that with an 18-year-old female, Kayla Revis, and they were on hand. They, we had technical support there. They... They're so instrumental. They built aftermarket products that customer can purchase for the, the slip-ons. They've been a fantastic partner. 
Absolutely. So, so Bree, you just brought that up. We were going to talk about it a little bit. Let's go ahead and talk about it now. So uh, Royal Enfield has several other flat track initiatives in America. Talk about the Build, Train, Race, and Build Moto, like you said. Uh, speak more on that, Bree, because a lot of people might not understand what it really is. Yeah, for sure. So I have a great partner in Adrian, and we always bounce ideas off of each other and figure out ways, you know, to get Royal Enfield in, you know, into the motorcycle scene and known a little bit more. Last year in Europe, he uh, had launched a Petrolite build-off program, and it was for um, four different countries in, within Europe, and the Petrolites is a motorcycle, a woman's motorcycle group. So he launched that, and he, he's like, hey, Bree, do you want to do something like that in the U.S.? And I, I was like, absolutely, but I want it to be flat track. I want it to be built off of INT 650, and I want to do it as you know a three-part process. And we chose four women that all have – some kind of uh, some kind of involvement in motorcycle industry. We have Melissa Paris, who's a professional road racer, who I know you know very well. Right. Uh, we have Lana Lana McNaughton, who is a phot photographer that started the Women's Moto Exhibit. We have a women's uh, uh, flat track or the District Twenty Three flat track champion Jillian Chesney from Minnesota, who I think you know as well. Yep. And then uh, we had to go for one for Can Can Canada. So we picked a lady that owns a uh, motorcycle DIY shop and their builds are crazy. Like all four of them are completely different. Uh, I would say we we're really excited to get racing at, you know, American flat track events. Um, and the part of the training aspect of it was they were going to do a, a race at mama tried, but that got postponed. So what we'd like to do now, and I think I've talked to Johnny briefly about it is him to do a training session over two or three days, either at his facility or up in Viola at the Speed Ranch, get the women out there. They're all really nervous about racing in front of the flat track, American flat track audience. And they've all said, Brie, now that Mama Tried is not happening, how can we get some training done on the bike? So we'll get them all out there on the motorcycles for you know a couple days to get them acclimated, let Johnny work through all these pointers with them. And then hopefully once the season starts, they'll be able to race at, uh, I think, four or five American flat track events. That's awesome. I, I love that you're getting females involved in our sport. I mean, there's there's some fast females already, but I love what you guys are doing to help out, uh, you know, promote the you know your brand for one and getting females involved in flat track. So uh, I've got a follow up on that one. Bree, how did you get involved in flat track? I know ever since I've known you, you've you've been right there deep in flat track. I have just always liked being around racing, period. I've always just had an obsession with watching people go fast and trying to go fast myself. I've never gone fast. <laughs> um, well, you, you've never came to a mode anatomy. So. There you go. But that's going to happen, and you're going to change it, right? That's the point. So I actually posted a photo on my Instagram yesterday of my first ever flat track race start, and I was so nervous at the start. I popped a wheelie, my first ever wheelie, unintentional, mind you, and rode around with both of my legs out, goon riding for two laps. It was the most embarrassing experience. And after that, I flew down to Texas Tornado Boot Camp and I had a female instructor just really work with me on a little 125. It, but it's been years now. And everyone's like, Brian, you got to continue racing now that you're doing all these programs or whatever. And I know I've hit Johnny up. And I'm like, OK, I need I need some Johnny. I need Johnny to give me some instruction because I don't want to make a fool out of myself again. Yeah, but I, I was really excited about you know, getting this program going with Johnny, I, you know me, I come from a racing background, you know, I've, that's all I knew for 20 years before coming to Royal Enfield, but I didn't want to do it at the wrong moment. And Adrian and I often talked about that, like, when is the right opportunity? You know, why are we doing this? What are we looking forward? You know, so we, we don't do something without the two of us really understanding the project and how we, what, what we want the outcomes to be. So after having the, the twins out for a year stock and being able to work with Johnny behind the scenes, we decided, okay, now's the time to get our toes wet and let's let's not go too fast. Let's do, you know, the crawl walk run step. Let's get Johnny out there, have him develop this bike motorcycle, make it better and better, and then we can just take it to the next level. Um, but I think the great thing about what we're doing with Johnny is he's able to talk to the guys at Harris. He's able to talk to our development riders over in um, the UK and India. He's able to talk to Adrian and say, hey, listen, I think this is going to need to be changed to be able to do this, this, and the other thing. And it's not like he has to go through 50 different people to get to the person that needs to make those decisions. And I, I think that's where we have a leg up on a lot of things is, you know, Johnny can real time WhatsApp Adrian and be like, okay, dude, rode the bike. This needs to change or this is great. Let's capitalize on this. 
and there's not some big crazy corporate process and so this was a great time for us to you know get going into flat track and i i just we're so antsy trying to see this motorcycle race in some some aspect i don't even care if it's johnny racing maxton or whatever let's just get it <laughs> i think that's going to happen pretty soon hopefully anyways uh Bri, yeah. the, the ft 400 or 411 was revealed at the eicma show i i'm not sure how to say that because I'm not, <laughs> say it again eicma Eichma, okay. Yeah. So I spelled it out then, but yeah. what, was, what was the reaction whenever that, that FT411 was revealed? Actually, so the the FT411, but Johnny's concept motorcycle was revealed, and the world went crazy. So I handle um, uh, marketing and communications, and because Americans are so obsessed with flat track, I can't tell you, right off the bat, I think I woke up the next morning after the first day and had like 48 emails just on the concept bike and we weren't ready to announce at the time that we were going flat track racing there's a lot of variables in place not only for the ft411 but for johnny's bike and we didn't want to say anything because we didn't know if we were going to be able to be able to pull it off obviously adrian and um you know your boss mr Locke, have been in deep conversation for a long time and there's a lot of things to take into consideration and i i couldn't say anything to anybody but the response was overwhelming media outlets fans customers people that didn't even know about us before somehow we were you know on their radar and adrian's like okay i guess we have to do it now we have to find a way to make it work we just want to make sure we do it the right way yeah i, I i'm sure it was exciting for sure and stuff that you weren't ready for and like you said you couldn't answer everything no. let's, let's move over to johnny so when we get to racing which is hopefully soon uh what are you most looking forward to competing on this new machine uh, I mean, it's a motor, it's a motorcycle at the end of the day. Um, you know, so I think it's just getting out there and riding it and, uh, kind of going through the challenges, but also, you know, seeing what the good, the good of the bike is. And like I said, I think, I think the way the, I really liked when I rode, you know, the other parallel twins, you know, the way the bikes worked, uh, you know, was, they kind of acted like a big Rotex, in a in a way, um, you know, big single cylinder, you know, that's kind of the, the, the feeling of the power. And I, I always like that. So, um, you know, I think that's, that's going to be you know, exciting to see, I, you know, it's been a while since, um, you know, it's been a couple of years since anybody's ridden a bike that's, you know, like this, like the triumph or whatever, you know, an air cooled bike, but I still think we're, we're, you know, with the liquid cooled bikes and the, the high revs that these Indians have, you know, obviously it's, um, you know, allows the guys to, you know, ride the bikes a little differently. But also watching a lot of these old, you know, a lot of this, this, uh, this downtime is having me watching a lot of old videos and stuff too. And, you know, the, the way the guys rode the XRs and stuff, yes, it was, it was amazing back in the day. And I think, I think a lot of the racing has got away from that lately just because of what the FTR has been able to kind of do on the track with the rev limiter and the way the guys run in the corner a little different and maybe slow down a little bit more than they used to. So it's, uh, I think it's going to be exciting to kind of just kind of bring something new uh, to the table. Um, you know, I'm excited for, you know, the smaller tracks at first and that's kind of our, been our goal along as we weren't really planning on doing miles. Um, you know, even this year we're, you know, we're planning on coming halfway through the season after we, we, um, we got some testing in and then start off at, uh, like up in Loudoun, um, New Hampshire up, up at that short track and then kind of do that and then do a couple TTs like the super TTs. Uh, I mean, that's super TTs, but you know, I got a provisional to do the, uh, uh, the super twins class for the TTs. And, um, you know, I was excited for that because, you know, TTs comes down to riding, but just a really balanced motorcycle. And that's what I, I feel like we got already is the balanced motorcycle. And now it's just kind of adding a little bit more power in the thing. Um, you know, so I'm excited to see the progression of that. Johnny, you've, you've probably made more main events on more different brands of motorcycles than anybody I know. And, and I've been in this sport for an awful long time. Uh, I think that is because of your riding ability, but do you think that's part of the reason that Royal Enfield picked you? Yeah, I would, I would think so. I mean, um, you know, like, like she said, uh, like Reese said with, with S and S, it was one of those deals where, uh, Paul brought that up. He's like, man, you, you've ridden every single motorcycle. And then as soon as you jumped on the FTR, the first, first race ever, you got a podium on the thing. You know, I rode around in the parking lot before I, uh, actually went racing that day so um you know 
Yeah, I think it's natural, you know, the ability to kind of adapt to the situation that I'm in, uh, you know, the handling of the bike and kind of, uh, you know, use my tall structure, you know, to kind of leverage when I need to. But um, but now as I'm, you know, looking deeper into things and watching and seeing what I did before, you know, I'm starting to break down a lot of the, the good and bad about my riding style. And I think that's going to also help, um, you know, develop this bike. So I think I think because I've, I think I. I'm pretty sure I have the record uh, for most most brands, um, and I kind of have a short. You know, I haven't been racing. You know, I've been racing a while, but I haven't really raced that many races in the last ten years. Um, you never really did a full season. Um, you know, so you know, I think they they probably just rolled the dice and just threw it, and they're like, yeah, yep, it's ten. Yep, two fives make a ten. We'll pick Johnny. <laughs> Well, at least at least one thing you're you're pretty funny, but man, I, I'm I'm so excited to see you on this motorcycle. I can't wait for this to happen, Bree. I know you're just as excited as as all the other fans are. Um, is, is there a way that we can follow the progression of this motorcycle, Bree? Is there a website or is there just social media we should be looking, you know, keeping an eye on? Johnny's Mr. Proactive. Um, so he started a Instagram page. I think last Saturday or two Saturdays ago, he was. He's like, okay, we got to get this going. We got to start sharing content. Um, hopefully, over time, we'll be able to build more content to be able to share with you guys. So it's a uh, Moto Anatomy X Royal Infield. It's a very long title. Um, you could probably find it through linking through Johnny's Instagram um, okay. and then finding it from there. So we'll use that kind of as a platform for racing, and then also Johnny's Facebook page for Moto Anatomy. I'm sure he'll post some updates on that as well. Yeah, that was the first first time I got yelled at by Bree. <laughs> he did, he didn't get yelled at. He yeah, got talked to in a stern manner. <laughs> exactly. I, I just I can't sit around. I told you, Scotty, it's dark outside. I can't ride a motorcycle at eight o'clock. So why not start an Instagram page? Uh, hey, I appreciate him being proactive. I would have just liked an email beforehand, Johnny. <laughs> Sounds like you guys are, are getting along real well. So, Johnny, I think next thing for you is put some lights in there at the uh, Moto Anatomy Academy. Then uh, you guys can ride at nighttime. Uh, we're already working on that. But, no, we it's funny. I was I was thinking about it the other day, Bree. I, uh, you remember that time when I did ride for another brand and you ran a team for another brand? I remember. And, uh, they, for, they, they lost my suitcase. And yeah. I wanted to ride so bad. It was um, – we're at Barber. I and, remember uh, that, yeah. There was, uh, if, if you guys ever seen him, but Joey Pascarella, he's about 110 pounds wet. Yeah. Uh, one, you know, Daytona, you know, before, you know, the 200. And uh, I'm like, is there leathers in here that I can borrow? <clears throat> they were so tight that I couldn't buckle the, I mean, it was bad. Like, I mean, I thought I was going to blow the, all the zipper out, out of them. <laughs> but uh, three did get me zipped up in those things and we went riding and I had a fun, you know, so. Um, I was thinking about the other day. I'm like, man, remember that time? And then she told me a little trick with the airlines because they lost my luggage and helped me out a little bit. So, uh, <laughs> so I didn't have to wear Joey's leathers for a day before he would race in them because we were the same size. And he used to steal my skinny jeans. Wow. <laughs> so, and I'm, I'm six foot and a hundred and I was probably 165 then. You know, just yeah. I'm a bigger guy. <laughs> I look funny, but I didn't, I didn't care. It was a motorcycle and I wanted to ride. So, um, Do you have any pictures from that? I Somewhere. Um, I can't say. Bill, the one guy Bill had some and he sent some to me not long ago. So, oh, we need it for a um, throwback. Yeah, so we yeah, do. It, it, was, it, was pretty, it was pretty good. But no, that's uh, – I'm excited on that, that nature of just, uh, you know, it's, it's a cool relationship. We know a lot of the same people for a long time and it doesn't feel like it's a corporate thing, even though we, I know it's a corporate thing and I, I know I should have ask questions before I uh, made Instagram and, you know, other stuff. Wait till she finds the other stuff. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, you know, it's, it's one of those things. I'm, ex you know, that's just kind of the, the nature of the, the, the brand itself. Already, I feel like it's uh, their family, you know, everybody in India. Uh, you know, I WhatsApp all those guys. and They love you, man. And, uh, you know, I can't wait to go back there. You know, England, it's cold. Uh, they can meet me in the U.S. the U.S. or, or in India, <laughs> but um, you know, it's just it just feels like it's a it's a family already, and that's that's kind of the the even more exciting thing about this program is just we can develop it and 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 we're all on the same page, and you know we know there's going to be you know building 
getting blocks, you know, along the way and we knock them down and, and, uh, you know, you know, challenge it as a team. I think that's, that's kind of the exciting, the really exciting thing about going yeah. racing with these guys. It's been, it's been so great getting to know what, what your plan is and what's been going on. I love it. And I appreciate you guys stopping by. We've got another guest going to join us and uh, earlier in the week, uh, you know, we AFT asked for questions for you guys. And so we thought we'd bring in Kristen beat, who is the NBC sports, uh, bit reporter. And uh, Kristen's going to join us now, and she's got some questions from our fans to ask you guys. Kristen, before we do that, what have you been doing during quarantine time? Oh, <laughs> what everyone else has been doing, I've been going to Lowe's and working on the house. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, no. Um, actually, I was talking to Giselle and Helen about this earlier this week, but my college, USD, down in San Diego, started offering free online courses. So at the beginning of quarantine, I registered for sports psychology and uh, sports communication. So I'm coming at you guys. Uh-oh. Wow. Wow. <laughs> great. So, great. More questions for me? <laughs> I know. And, well, it's so funny. And I have to kind of add this. You know, when I first started in American flat track, it's so different than traditional motocross or supercross, what I had kind of done myself growing up. So the body mechanics was something I was still trying to wrap my head around. So my go-to was always... Johnny Lewis. And whenever I had a question, it was, hey, Johnny, why is he doing this? Or explain this to me. And that's what Johnny Lewis is so good at. It's so good at articulating writer feel. Things that some writers will never have a knowledge of their entire career. Johnny Lewis is able to kind of put into words and explain to people. And that's why he's such a good writer coach. I know this season, this last season, he worked with Dallas Daniels. And I mean, you know how that went. <laughs> Absolutely. So, Kristen, where, where are you at right now? Are you, I mean, I know your your fiance is a professional baseball player. Are you traveling at all right now, or are you are you guys stationed in one spot? We are quarantining in North Carolina, so we've been doing a lot of fishing <laughs> and just trying to stay active. But I hear they're going back pretty soon. So, knock on wood. Let's hope that we all get back to back to normal as soon as possible. Yeah, we're all ready. We're ready to be at the racetrack. But I, 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 we brought you on because some fans had asked some questions through Facebook. So you've got some questions for these two. And and uh, why don't you take it away? I do. So these are fan questions from Facebook. And, you know, Johnny or Bree, if you guys want to jump in. The first question comes from Chris G. And, uh, Johnny, you already kind of preluded to this a little bit. He's asking, is Earl Enfield going to be racing in the Super Twins class? I know you mentioned on the TTs, but can you kind of elaborate on that and how that came together? Yeah, you know, uh, just I wanted to ride more after the halfway of the season. So I figured, uh, you know, I kind of begged, borrowed, and, you know, went in the office a few times. Like, guys, is there any way I can ride TTs? Like, and anybody not signed up? Is there any opportunities? Like, I'll, I'll pay right now, whatever I have to do. And, um, you know, I also love TTs just from my supermoto background. So, um, you know, they're, you know, they already give me the, the one of the spots for the, the super twins for the TTs. And, uh, you know, hopefully we can get out there and, and, you know, mix it up with the guys that, I, you know, usually race against. Because that's going to be a difference for me is uh, I'm in used to racing the guys in the super twins class when I do race, mm-hmm. um, you know pissing them off more than becoming friends but um (laughs) um um, you know so racing production class you know with with guys that you know some of these guys like ryan barnes i mean i remember being at his dad's wedding when ryan was you know three years old and i've actually never raced against him so it's it's uh and i've helped you know i've helped him a little bit he's asked me questions at a local race and i've done a lot of stuff so it's kind of going to be interested in racing against these these guys that are you know a different class so to be able to jump back in the super twins and go race the guys that I'm normally racing against, uh, it's going to be interesting. You know, I think, uh, just on different bike, but also just in comparison, I, I think both classes are going to be, you know, super stacked. Um, you know, everybody has different knacks. So, uh, you know, that's, that's kind of where the super twins thing came, came about. Bree, I mean, do you see there kind of being a future for a Royal Enfield in the super twins class? I don't want to put you on the hot spot, but could you see this coming, coming into play a little more, even in the coming years? I think that's what we're we're aiming to get to in the future, but that you know really depends on how development goes, and you know if Johnny you know thinks his motorcycle is capable of playing with the big boys more often. I like it. I love it. Okay, so let's move on to question number two. <clears throat> this comes from Chris S. Uh, now this is more mechanical kind of stuff. So either of you, if you want to jump in, I think he wants to know uh, a little bit more about the bike. So what's the motor size? Is it a two hundred and seventy seventy degree crank? What's the dyno like, the horsepower, and who is the frame made by? It's <laughs> a mouthful. Well, the frame is made by Harris Performance, so we could talk about that. I would say, like, for the other stuff, 
I just twist the, I just twist the throttle. Yeah. So I, ask, I don't I don't ask questions. I don't ask questions. I just go. Does it does it turn and there's a go? That's that's all my questions. So, um, you know, really, it's just been down to, I kind of told the guys what we need power wise, um, you know, what we're looking for and what you know what we kind of need for a short track TT and a half mile and and, and kind of let the the miles kind of come to. I don't think we're gonna chase that right away. Um, just about building reliable, you know motorcycle that hooks up and you know hopefully does wheelies because i love the wheelie um <laughs> Great. You know, teach you how to do that <laughs> yeah so i mean i think that's that's kind of i just i left that in the hands of the guys hey like here's some dyno sheets this is you know charged from an ftr this is what a harley looks like this is what a ducati looks like uh you know ktm suzuki what else have i ridden uh, you know everything <laughs> um but i also gathered a lot of information over the years so um I was able to hand that to them and say, hey, like, build this what, to what, you know, you can close to this. And I don't ask details. I mean, with the time and experience you kind of had on that bike, just to follow up on that, what do you like about this bike? You've literally raced, I mean, as you said, every single make. So what about this bike do you really like? About, what are you gelling with on this bike? Yeah, like I said earlier, it was um, the balance. You know, the motor is a parallel twin. It's a lower center of gravity. Um, you know, the motor, if you look at it, it's, it looks like a classic looking motor. Um, you know, so when they shipped everything over from England, I'm like, man, this motor looks heavy. You know, and I go to pick it up. I'm like, whoa, it's not that heavy. Or I've been working out and I feel really strong. <laughs> but um, but no, it, it's it's not as, you know, it's not a big heavy motor. as like I, like I you know, in the past, like the Triumph, um, you know, even on the scales, even as a concept bike, I was like, put the thing on. I'm like, I like it. It wasn't... Uh, it wasn't far off, and this was just, you know, just a bike that, like, like we talked about earlier, everything was adjustable in the frame, so everything's made a little bigger, a little thicker, um, you know. So there's definitely weight to lose, and uh, you know that that gets me excited. If it was like, hey, we got this thing, this thing we can go, and then this is the weight, I'm like, you know, I'd be kind of worried. But um, that's uh, there's tons of potential I feel still left with the chassis, uh, weight wise, you know, stuff like that. So it's kind of got me excited. Okay, let's move on to question number three from Dave S. And this is the big, the big one. Is the bike race ready? Well, we don't have the race bike here yet, so he has. <laughs> quarantine has, uh, has uh, quarantine and Corona and all that fun stuff has um, stopped the shipping process. So mm -hmm. um, a lot of stuff is just kind of stuck, and we're we're at a waiting waiting game on that. But like we talked about earlier, we have a concept bike that. We did make a good amount of changes too, um, but um, it's close enough to start kind of feeling out the way uh, you know the chassis is designed and making changes to it. And I think that's the biggest thing for me is understanding uh, you know the thought process when they built the frame and what they were their thoughts were on how the you know rear linkage and stuff works. Um, so just playing around with that. So we're close, but no, we're not we're not race ready, but. Um, we have a little bit of time. And like I said, we weren't planning on starting right away. Um, so we're still, we still have a few months to get, get there um, to where we were playing on anyway. So mm -hmm. we should be good. Bree, something that I noticed about the bike, and I just want to kind of tail the end of that right there. Um, it's beautiful. When you look at the design of the bike, it just has such good flow and function. Um, can you draw inspiration there? Where did the inspiration kind of come from that bike? I know it's got a lot of history, but that bike specifically, even when it comes down to the graphics, what we see on social media, these little pieces, they drop. And where does that come from? Adrian. Adrian is the the brain behind the design and concept of that motorcycle. Adrian is, I don't know if you heard earlier, he's my counterpart. He works for the technology center in the UK uh, in the industrial design department. And this motorcycle is his his baby as H, as Johnny referred to it earlier. So from a design aesthetics, even from, you know, things that you don't see, Adrian is, was very hands-on for every aspect of it. So I, I wish I could say that any of it was due to me or my team, but it's all Adrian. It's gorgeous. It's just such a cool bike. It is. It's absolutely beautiful. Well, Bree, I got one more question. Will Adrian come over and go to any of our races now that he is his baby is going to be on the racetrack? I mean, is he going to come over and attend any Grand Nationals? So he was slated to come to Daytona, but then they put a ban um, uh, from our in, an internal ban from us traveling to other countries at that. You know, I think it was the day he was slated to come over. 
Wow. Um, but he will come over. He definitely is going to make some time, not only for the Johnny's uh, motorcycle, but for also for the Bill Train Race program. Nice. So he's very instrumental in supporting both of those programs. And without him, we wouldn't have been able to do either. How many kids do you have? No, nah, two. I got uh, Cla Clary's. She'll be four, two weeks. And then um, mm -hmm. Max and uh, Max and six. Are they on bikes yet? Max oh, yeah. is. No, Clary. Is too. I, uh, really? How young she, is Claire? She was butt naked riding her Stasic with one leg sticking off to the side, <laughs> no helmet, and like full speed. Wait, I think, did you post that on Instagram? I think I saw something like that. Uh, I think post everything. Wife, I think yeah. Alicia did, but I don't. I don't know if I did. But yes, yeah, I'm completely. Naked. I'm like Clary. Oh, one, you, one, you need a helmet. Two, you need pants. <laughs> the helmet first, then pants. <laughs> and then Sh was shoes like, one day. No, they don't. No, they don't. I know they shoes. never wear shoes. <laughs> I get we get yelled. They at own there. any shoes, Johnny? No, they just yeah. them all. Or we I forget where me and Maxon went. We went somewhere and totally forgot his shoes. So I had to like, he wore Clary's like Uggs. <laughs> <laughs> In Florida, I love it. I love it. Like nice. Ninety degrees outside, and he has shorts on. Are you doing any crazy diets this off season, or have you changed your diet at all? Are you still? No, I'm just I'm always. I'm always plant based, and uh, I mean, cheating for me is uh, I don't know. <laughs> Dave. A, beyond, a beyond burger. What um, was that, Brie? What was that, Brie? There's been like this trend for so many of the writers now, like transitioning to this plant based diet. Like now, Jared Meese is on it. I heard that some he other guys are all the time. It. Huh? He texts me all the time about it. Yeah. So, like, what do you think about that? Do you think it's going to show in his performance? Uh, yeah. I mean, I felt it. Um, we did it because me and Alicia were trying to get pregnant. Uh, well, I was trying to get her pregnant. Yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> like when we first got married, we've been married like I don't know, eleven years now, ten years. I don't know something. And uh, we tried for three years and nothing worked. So she went fully raw, fruits and vegetables, and then got married. I mean, got pregnant uh, <laughs> six months later, and then. After Max was born, when I moved down here to Florida, I went fully, like, I was kind of vegan in the morning, vegan at night, mm -hmm. and then uh, whatever during the day. Mm -hmm. um, and then, um, yeah, then I went fully, I went, I went fully, uh, fully vegan when I moved to Florida, and I was riding motocross every single day, yeah. and uh, just felt my recovery just got better and better and better. And, uh, you know, I lost, like, 10 pounds, and I just, like, I had to work so hard to lose and I just got there and then I haven't fluctuated I haven't fluctuated weight in in five years like I weigh the exact same like I'm one 172 to 173 like all the time so yes yeah, so you think we're gonna see like a different performance output from maybe lose because of that oh uh, what a different performance output with like with me because he's now plant-based uh no I mean he's been he's been asking for probably two years i think it's just uh you know just trying to feel a little bit better i mean obviously what he trains with alden baker i mean he trains pretty hard compared to you know most guys and i think i think some of it you know might have been you know wearing himself down a little bit but it's just trying to i think he's even more on top of it now and to realize like that's just i mean if not more important than uh physical training i mean i Bree don't want hear this, but I don't, I don't, she doesn't care, but I don't train at all. Like I, I go for runs like, and if I haven't ran in like six months, I'll go run and I can run like this under, uh, under seven minute mile and, and then, uh, you know, go for eight miles. You know, I just feel good where before I couldn't even do that. So I don't know. It's just, uh, I feel like nutrition is even more important than the actual physical side of training for, for me at least. Johnny, just go yeah. fast. That's all I care about. <laughs> just go fast. Go fast. Go fast. Go fast. Okay. Yeah, Scott, so. What did guys used to eat back in the day? Like, what did the legends used to eat? They didn't Smoked care. Cigarettes yeah. and cheeseburgers. Yes. Gary Nixon, I've never seen, I never saw him. I've no, I knew that guy for 20 something years. I never saw him yeah. eat anything healthy, do anything yeah. healthy. He would drink 15 energy drinks a day where we'd have to start hiding them from him. At, like, yeah. I don't think in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, anyone was healthy. Mm -mm, no one cared. <laughs> no. It was, 
They didn't and they talk to Lewis here who doesn't work out, but will run a sub seven minute mile. He's like a weird alien type person. He's not human. He, <laughs> Johnny's just Johnny. He's another level. I'm coming to Wisconsin. We're gonna we're gonna get on a. I'm gonna move in for two weeks. What are you gonna take away my cupcakes? Yep. Well, I'm so excited that Royal Enfield's getting involved in flat track, and, and there's a lot going on, and it's all good stuff. I really uh, appreciate the time. Bree, it's good talking to you. It's been too long, and uh, hopefully I'll see you at the racetrack soon. Johnny, thanks for going to the bicycle shop slash coffee <laughs> shop so, so we can talk to you. And Kristen, thanks for coming on and talking and asking some questions for us. It's been really great. And, uh, man, thanks, to everybody, for coming on. We appreciate it. Thanks for having us, Scotty. Absolutely. Yeah, it's good. I miss all your faces. It's good. <laughs> I miss you too, Johnny. Well, that is it. Thanks to Royal Enfield. That's been the AFT show. Episode number four presented by Royal Enfield. We'll talk to you guys next week. I never saw him. I've not, I knew that guy for 20 something years. I never saw him yeah. eat anything. Healthy. Thanks for coming on and talking and asking some questions for us. It's been really great. And, uh, man, thanks, to everybody, for coming on. We appreciate it. Thanks for having us, Scotty. Absolutely. Yeah, it's good. I miss all your faces. It's good. <laughs> I miss you too, Johnny. Well, that is it. Thanks to Royal Enfield. That's been the AFT Show, episode number four.